Hi guys, so I usually don't make short tutorial videos like this, but I just discovered something that will probably help you with managing IK constraints on certain Pokemon models, and thus making the process of creating things like walking animations easier. Since I can't find a place for this in a future video, I decided just to make a quick video now to explain how this new trick works. So if you recall from my previous tutorials, I said that when the leg bones on an armature are disconnected like this, you would have to sit up the IK higher to prevent some distortion from happening. And while this still works for keeping the model's feet on the ground, the bones beneath the IK would still need to be animated individually. I will show you how an IK would be set up in this fashion. First we will select our armature, go into edit mode, and then select the end bone that's closest to where we want to set up our IK constraint. And then we'll go to the bone settings and remove the parent from the end bone. Now we can move the end bone in the 3D view to line up with where we want to put the constraint, which is right here. Now going into pose mode, with our end bone still selected, hold shift and select the leg bone. Now hold shift and press I, and then hit two active bone. Now our constraint is set up, but we still need to change some things. So with the yellow bone selected, the one with the IK constraint, Go to the bone constraint settings and set the chain length up until you see a dotted yellow line reaching towards the start of the first leg bone. And now, we are going to select the foot bone, go to the bone settings, and turn off inherit rotation. Now if we move the model around, the leg will stay in place, and if we move our end bone around, we can control much more of the leg at once and save its movements under one keyframe when animating. However, the IK will not affect any of the bones beneath it. So in this case, we would still need to move and keyframe the foot bone individually. But with this new trick I've learned, we can not only set up an IK at the bottom of almost any armature chain, but physically connect the bones that are separated apart from each other. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this other leg here. So the problem I had when trying to connect these bones together in the past is that when you enable connect on the bone in the later part of the chain, that bone would extend itself to fill the gap between the two bones. But we don't want to do that, because it would cause some big distortion when rotating the now extended bone. So instead, we want to do the opposite, and extend the bone in an earlier part of the chain manually in order to keep the rotation in the armature correct. So what we are going to do is select the foot bone, go into edit mode, and then select the head of said bone. Now because the foot bone is very small and both of the points are in basically the same spot, we will probably need to check whether we have the right end of the right bone selected. And the best way to check that is to press G to grab the end of the bone and move it around a bit. Then right click in order to make it return to the previous spot. If the dotted line between our disconnected bones moves along with the point we have selected, then you have selected the right point of the bone. If it does not, right click, go back, and select around the same area again until you select the right point. And now with the right bone selected, we are going to use these arrows to carefully move the point, and thus extend the bone, to fill in the gap between our two bones. Once we have lined up the point with the back of the other bone and filled in the gap, we can select that bone and safely press the connect button without having to worry about the rotation becoming distorted. We can see this if we go back into pose mode and move the bones around a little bit. So now that our bones are connected together like this, we can properly set up an IK at a lower point in the model and control more of the leg with the single end bone. So I'm going to now set up an IK on this leg using this end bone here. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing as last time. I'm going to go into edit mode and remove the end bone's parent, move it down between the toe and the foot since we can properly set it there now, go to pose mode and shift select the foot bone with our end bone still selected, hold shift and press I to set up our constraint, Go to the bone constraint settings and set the chain length to 3 this time, because we have another bone in our chain now, and go to the bone that is right in front of our constraint, usually the toe bone, and turn off inherent rotation in its bone settings. And now, we can basically control the entire leg without having to worry about moving or keyframing this foot bone manually anymore. Now we only need to do so with the end bone and the toe bone. I'm going to show one more example with a different model, in this case the Fennekin model, 
because it was brought back to my attention that not one, but two bones are disconnected on each leg with this model. It would be impossible to set up an IK on the legs in this state, but now with what we have learned, we can by connecting all these leg bones together. So in edit mode, I'm going to start with selecting and extending the foot bone, because it is all by itself and selecting the individual points will be easier now that the leg bone is not in the way. I'm going to select the front end of the foot bone and use these arrows to precisely move it to the start of the toe bone. Then I will select the toe bone and turn on the connect button in its bone settings to connect them together. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this bone up here. I'm going to select the front end of the leg bone so that the dotted line is moving with the point. Move it into position, and then select the foot bone and turn on connect. Now all of the bones are connected and we can properly set up an IK without any problems. As you can see, this technique can save you a lot of time and make animating much easier. I apologize for not finding this before my walking and IK constraint tutorials, but I hope this will still help you regardless. Thanks for watching and I wish you luck on your future projects.